Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Today is Trinity Sunday and our gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew in the 28th chapter beginning with the 16th verse. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. That's how Matthew concludes his account of the Gospel. This is sometimes referred to as the Great Commission. The Go Therefore. Here on Trinity Sunday, it's one of those days that I love, partially because nobody else does it. Nobody else recognizes the Trinity. Nobody else says, hey, did you get your Trinity Day present? Or have you sent your Trinity Day cards? This is a day that we Christians well, I should say, most Christians, celebrate and lift up that uniqueness of Christianity. What do I mean by that? Well, I want you to think about what had already happened in the life of the disciples. They had been called and summoned from various occupations. They had traveled and walked and been in the presence of someone who initially they thought was a rabbi, a good teacher, someone who had wisdom to impart. They discovered through the time that they spent with Jesus that he was more than that, so much more, to the point where Peter said, you are the Christ, the Anointed One, the Son of God. They followed him all the way to Jerusalem that last time for Passover. And while there he was executed by the Romans, buried, and for three days they mourned and grieved and feared for their future. But then, the power of God was manifested in the resurrection. And for 40 days, they had, they got to be with Jesus again, and they got to, to walk and to hear him and to share. I sometimes wonder why the gospel writers didn't say more about what had happened during those 40 days. There's a little bit, but not much. The presence of God was enough. Maybe that's the lesson. And so, 40 days after Passover was what we refer to as the Ascension, when Jesus physically left this earth and resumed his place in the heaven. For ten more days, the disciples waited and they listened and they prayed and they sang until the day of Pentecost, when the power of God that had been made present in Jesus' life was made present in theirs. That's a pretty good story. And 
if nothing else had happened, we would still marvel at a group of people who transformed their world and ours. But this morning, we, we take one more step and we not only acknowledge, but we celebrate, we lift up this idea of resurrection and power and Christ and God and Spirit all present in the community known as the Trinity. Now, the Trinity, that word or triune, those are not mentioned in the scriptures. That is a word that came into development much later. A lot has been tried over the years to point to various passages and say, here is where the Trinity, the triune nature of God is present. Most often, we look to the Great Commission, where Jesus says to baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's an amazing idea that we worship one God, but this one God who is known to us in three ways. Now, most traditions, most Christian traditions, refer to this as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost. Don't get hung up on the titles. If saying Father God is, is a problem for you, don't say it. Say Mother God, Creator God. Uh, if saying Son is a problem, say Redeemer. If saying Holy Ghost or Spirit you're not sure about, say something like Sustainer. The tradition that United Methodism is part of follows the, the custom of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's, that's what I use. But I don't want to say that's the only way to refer to this. It just, uh, just occurred to me, one of my seminary professors, um, I think it was uh, James Logan, who said that anyone who preaches longer than five minutes on the Trinity is venturing into heresy. Well, I've already preached more than five minutes, but here, here we go. The eleven disciples went to Galilee as Jesus had instructed them. This is leading up to the Ascension. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I want you to hear that, this idea that even when they were in the presence of Christ, even then, they weren't sure. So, if you have doubts, if you have struggled with various aspects or components of your faith, recognize that you're in good company. Because the disciples, they weren't asked to follow an idea or a doctrine or a dogma. They weren't asked to claim membership in an institution. They were asked, do this. And wherever two or three were gathered, I would be with you. Those were the words of Christ. Wherever two or three were gathered, here were eleven. And they still struggled with understanding the presence of God in their midst. We live in a world that every day we are reminded of how broken society is. How how much harm we do to one another. 
we claim, we Christians claim, that the Spirit of God is with us. And yet, we make a show of religion. Sometimes we engage in some very unchrist like behaviors. Sometimes we act as if the power of God is too weak for us and for the problem we face. But Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I want you to hear that again. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, if we say that Jesus is God, then for him to say all authority has been given to me, this is authority that he is claiming. If we say that Jesus is in us, then we too can claim the authority that the mind that is in Christ is in us and the Spirit of God which he invoked is also present with us even now. Even in the midst of a pandemic and social unrest and economic upheaval, all of that is part of who we are. And so he says, having claimed his authority and displayed it for the disciples to see, he gives a commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Today is also, in the United Methodist calendar, Peace with Justice Sunday. And in a day and age where we have seen for the last two weeks just constant reminders of a lack of justice, a lack of peace, a lack of understanding, where we have claimed the mantle of racism where we have wrapped ourselves in isolation. Jesus is calling us and commissioning us to go into the world, to participate in society, to lift up the name of Christ as our motivation and our purpose to transform the world. It is why we are here. Go and make disciples of all nations. Nations, communities beyond our own. Communities of color. Communities of sexual orientation. Communities of language. Communities of class. We are called to be people in community, following the example of the community of the triune God. This is why we're here. This is our commission. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's what we are part of. That's your inheritance. That is who we are. We were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The power of God was given to the disciples. And then he says, Teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. We don't get to make up who's included and who's not. We don't get to say, well, 
Yeah, but what about, he says, make disciples of all nations. Teach them everything that I have commanded you. That's it. That's why we get to celebrate every day, even the worst day you've ever had. You can do that with the knowledge and the assurance that this is not permanent. This is the end of one life and the beginning of another. And God is with me. Because remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. In the very early years of the church, there was this belief, a uh, supposition, that this meant that Jesus would be coming back any day. It's been nearly 2,000 years, 1900 and however many years now. In all that time, humanity has had ample reasons to give up hope. People have committed unspeakable atrocities. Empires have risen and fallen. Leaders have come and gone. People are born and people die every day. But in the midst of life, we are called to be aware of each other. We are called to be in love with creation as God is. This idea of Trinity, of awareness, that life is bigger than myself, that the universe does not revolve around me, The people marching on the, in the streets these last two weeks, it may seem easy to say this is a response to one man's death. It might be easy to tack on other grievances or societal ills. But the focus on our understanding, the focus on our vantage point is missing the point. My brother or sister, my siblings, pain should be in my awareness. Mr. Floyd's death in Minnesota was, in one sense, no more tragic than the death of anyone else who died of the pandemic, or anyone who died in the Congo or Yemen through war. Every life is precious. Every life has meaning. The question for us today, going forward in this community, is whether we think the community is strong enough to welcome one more. If we think the community is strong enough to withstand any challenge. If we think that God is big enough for us and for the other. Jesus said, go, and so we will. Amen.